Sunday night, June 26th service. Let's open up in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you once again for the desire that you put in our heart and for the strength that you've given unto us to be able to come once again in this building, Lord, for the purpose to once again to offer unto you the sacrifice of our praises, to proclaim your word, to lift up the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Father, we ask you for your blessing. We ask you for your anointing. We ask you that everything that will be said and done tonight, you will use it for your glory and for your honor. We thank you for we know that you're going to grant us the desire of our heart and gone, have your way. Once again, I thank you in Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. You may be seated. The Sunday night, I don't know if you were here or you're watching the live stream. We spoke about the difference between the rapture of the church and the second coming. I mean, if you want to listen to the sermon, all you have to do is go to our YouTube channel and you could watch last Sunday night service. Tonight I want to speak to you because there's a lot of discrepancy and there's a lot of conflict about the rapture. Some people believe that the rapture is going to take place before the Great Tribulation, which is pre-trib. Some people believe that the rapture is going to take place at the end of the tribulation. They call themselves the post-trib. But like I said this morning, God is not the author of confusion. Confusion does not come from God. It does not come from the Holy Spirit. Jesus is the truth. The Holy Spirit came to reveal the truth to us. So when we come to the scripture, when we approach the scripture and we come to different conclusion, there's got to be something wrong with us and now uh, with God because he's not trying to tell us something different from one another. And tonight I want to, and basically when people come to different conclusion, it's because of taking Bible passages and instead to approach them with an open mind and to allow the scripture to speak to us. We come to the scripture with a mind already made up and we use the scripture to try to prove it that we are right and people are wrong. So tonight I want to look at a few passages in the scripture that, point, that prove this point. That if you look at the scripture and you allow the scripture to speak to you, let it come Confusion and disagreement will be avoided. Now, for those who have been listening to me for a while, I believe that the rapture is going to take place before the great tribulation. When I look at the scripture, the scripture clearly states that Jesus is going to come back to take his bride and to bring it to the Father's house be before the, the beginning of the great tribulation. Tribulation. The passage that we usually use, one of the passages that we usually use to prove our point is 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, beginning with verse 16. Let's look at this verses once again. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, beginning with verse 16. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Let's look at this verse. The first thing that we know that Paul is speaking to the believer in Thessalonica. And he's telling them that when Jesus will come again, there will be no warning sign. There will be no pre-warning sign to tell people that we are going and we are drawing closer to him return. The, the, the second thing that Paul makes sure is that Jesus himself will descend from heaven. He's not going to send angel. He's not going to send the archangel. For the Lord himself will descend 
from heaven. Jesus himself will make his way down from heaven. Jesus descends from heaven. It's going to be preceded by a shout, by the voice of an archangel, and by the trumpet of God. Keep this in mind. The trumpet of God. And when Jesus will make his way down from heaven, preceded by the shout, by the voice of the archangel, by the trumpet of God, something supernatural is going to take place. The dead in Christ, every born again believer, from the day of Pentecost to the day when the, this event is going to take place, the grave will open up, the dead in Christ, and they are going to come back once again to life. Verse 17. Then, after the dead in Christ will rise first, then every believer who is living upon the earth, when this event is going to take place, their body is going to be transformed, then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with the dead in Christ. And we are going to be taken in the cloud to meet the Lord in the air. So the dead in Christ will rise first. The believer who are lying together with the dead in Christ are going to be taken up by the cloud and we are going to meet the Lord in the air. I want you to know that when this event takes place, Jesus will not come down all the way down to the earth. He will stop in the air. And we are going to meet him in the air. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51. Paul writing to another church. And he said this, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Behold, I tell you a mystery. Paul said, I'm going to reveal to you a mystery. Something that cannot be understood by human intelligence, but only can be understood and can be revealed by the Spirit of God. I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. We are not going to die, Paul said. But we all shall be changed. Paul said when Jesus come for his bride, there is going to be a group of believers, they will not experience death. But we all are going to be changed. 52. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. Paul said at the last trumpet, in 1 Corinthians, they call him the trump of God. In a twinkling of an eye, blink your eye. That's how quick it's going to be. In a blinking of an eye, the dead in Christ will rise first, and then those who are alive are going to be changed in a moment, in the shortest time possible. For the trumpet will sound, again, the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Again, some concept that Paul wrote to the Thessalonians. The dead in Christ will rise first, then we who are alive and, and remain are going to be changed in a moment in a twinkling of an eye. We are going to receive a glorified body, and we are going to be taken in the cloud to meet the Lord in the air. So, in a twinkling of an eye, in a moment, all this event is going to take place. One more. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 9. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. For God, for God, did not appoint us, the church, the believers, to rot. The great tribulation is the rot of the Lamb, is the rot 
of God upon a world that has rejected him. But Paul writing to the same believer in Thessalonica that he told them about Jesus coming down from heaven, stopping in the air, and then the dead in Christ, and those who are alive, they're going to meet him there. He said, God did not appoint that as unto wrath, but to a feign salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. So as you can see, we look at, we read at the scripture, and the clearly tells us what is going to take place when the rapture is going to happen. Now, there's some people who use it at the passage of Scripture to try to disprove that whatever I told you, you is not the truth, and they are truth. Now, let's look at a thumb of this. Matthew chapter 24, verse 30. Matthew Chapter 24, verse 30. Now, this is commonly called as the, the Olivet Discourse. Jesus, the disciple came to Jesus and asked him to tell them what would be the sign and when this, the event that he had just spoken will come to pass. And Jesus gave them a list of signs that will come to pass, think to look, to know how closer we are to his return. Then, all right, go back to 29, verse 29. Now, remember 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. When, P when Paul speaks about the rapture, he said that he does not give any sign. There's no Warning sign that tells us that the rapture is about to take place. But look what this Jesus says over here. Immediately after the tribulation of those days. So Jesus said, after the tribulation of those days, after the seven years period of great tribulation that God is going to put out upon the earth. So notice that whatever event is described here, how different the one we, what we read in 1 Thessalonians. Because in 1 Thessalonians, there's no warning sign. And, and Paul said that God did not appoint us to go through the tribulation. But here Jesus said, immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened. People who are going to be on this earth, when this event is going to take place, they are going to see visible sign. They are going to tell them, Jesus is coming back. Jesus said the sun will be darkened. The moon will not give us light. The star will fall from heaven. And the power of the heaven will be shaken. Notice of the terrible sign. An event you are going to take place immediately after the tribulation of those days. All this event that Jesus spoke in Matthew are completely different than what we read in 1 Thessalonians where Paul speaks about the rapture of the church. And look what happened next. Verse 30. Then, after the great tribulation, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give us light, the power of the heavens shall be shaken. Then the sign of man will appear in heaven. After those events, after those signs will take place, then Jesus, the sign of the Son of Man. We don't know what the sign of the Son of Man is. Some people think there could be a cross that God will display in the sky to warn the whole world that the Savior is coming back again. But then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven. 
And then all the tribe of the earth will mourn. Remember, during the rapture, no one will see him because Jesus is going to stop in the cloud and we are going to meet him in the cloud. So in Matthew chapter 14, Jesus is speaking about a different event. There are going to be sign in the heavens. Then, after the sign in the heaven, the, son, the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven. And then all the tribe of the earth will mourn, and they will see, no, they will see the Son of Man coming on the cloud of heaven with power and great glory. When the rapture is going to take place, the cloud is going to carry us to meet Jesus in the air. In this event described in Matthew 24, which is not the same, Jesus is going to be carried by the cloud back to the earth, and everyone who is living upon the face of the earth, they will see him. The Bible said the tribes of the earth will mourn because they will visibly see Jesus coming in the cloud. Two different events. It's not the same event. Two different events. Now, Look at verse 31. Verse 31. Verse 30. Okay, adding and adding. I don't know why I don't get it, but. And he will send his angel with a great sound of a trumpet. Note it. When the rapture is going to take place, the Lord himself will descend from heaven. Now, Jesus said that when Jesus will come down in the cloud, after all the signs that are going to be manifest in the heaven, he will dispatch his angel. He will send his angel with the great sound of a trumpet. Now, let me make it all the difference. Remember, 1 Thessalonians, for the Lord himself will descend from heaven with the shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet of God. Paul speaks about in Corinthians, the last trumpet. This is a great sound of a trump. It's a different trumpet. It's not the trumpet that he will announce the rupture of the church. It is not the trumpet that is going to precede the rupture of the church. He will send his angel with the great sound of a trumpet, and they will gather together his elect from the four winds, from one hand of heaven to the other. So Jesus will descend from heaven in the cloud. All the people of the earth will see him and they will mourn. The reason he's going to mourn is because they, now they realize the mistake they made. Now they realize that they've been deceived, that they believe that the Antichrist was the, was the Messiah. They have, to, they have taken the mark of the beast and now they understand that they are doomed forever. Now they understand that what's waiting for them is God judgment and, the, and to be cast into the lake of fire. So they are going to mourn because they are going to realize we were duped. We were deceived. And Jesus is going to send his angels. Now, in the rapture, he himself will descend. And they will gather his elect. See, when, when Bible scholars read his elect, they think, they say that the elect speak about the church. So after the tribulation, Jesus is going to come, is going to send his angel, and the angel is going to gather the church, the believer, from the four corners of the heaven. And he's going to bring them to meet him in the air. They are so, they're going to, so the rapture is going to take place at the end of the tribulation, we're going to go meet the Lord in the air, and then we're going to come back. With, we're going to turn around, and we're going to come back with them. That's what they explain. 
Now, notice something. It doesn't mention about the dead in Christ rising first. He will send his angel with a great sound of a trumpet. They will gather together his elect from the four winds. From one hand of heaven. No mention about the dead in Christ rise first. So as you can see, Jesus is talking about a different event. He's not talking about the rapture of the church. See, the resurrection of the dead in Revelation is mentioned in Revelation chapter 20, verse 4. Revelation chapter 20, verse 4. And I thought throne, and they sat on them. So John thought throne, and they saw people sitting on them. And judgments committed to them. And whoever was sitting on the throne, God grant them to be judges, to judge those who have left, those who are left behind, those who reject Jesus, those who took the mark of the beast. Though they are going to be granted to be judges. Now, look at that. Then I saw the souls of those who have been aided by their witness to Jesus and for the word of God who have now worshipped the beast or his image and they have not received his mark on their forehead, on their hand, and they live and reign with Christ for a thousand years. We have a resurrection described in Revelation chapter 20, verse 4. But I want you to know that this, resurrect, this resurrection has nothing to do with the dead in Christ. It's nothing to do with the people that Paul described in 1 Thessalonians. The people that are going to be resurrected are those who during the tribulation are going to be killed, are going to be, to be beheaded for their testimony for Jesus Christ, because they refuse to bow down and to worship the Antichrist. They refuse to take the mark of the beast, and because they refuse to give allegiance to him, they are going to be killed during the tribulation period. So as you can see, this, this resurrection that is going to take place in, Re in Revelation chapter 20, verse 4, is now the rapture of the church. Paul said in Thessalonians, the dead in Christ, these are a different group of believers. These are believers who are going to come and believe, and believe that Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior, during the great tribulation period. And they are going to be resurrected at the beginning of the millennium. At the beginning of the thousand years reign of Christ. Not some event, not some group of people. Now, let me bring this to a conclusion. Why do a lot of Bible scholars and students and professors, they read this verse and they say that Jesus is talking about the rapture of the church? That this, this passage that we read in Matthew chapter 24 and Revelation, it speaks about the rapture of the church. The two first Thessalonians and Matthew 24 and Revelation 20 is the same event. Even though I just show you they are not, it's not the same event. It all boiled down to false interpretation. Now let me give you two reasons. In Matthew 24, Jesus is not talking about the church. Jesus is talking about the nation of Israel. See, a lot of people place the church in Matthew 24. And when you place the church in Matthew 24, and then you come to the conclusion that the church is going to go through the tribulation period. But the church is not mentioned in Matthew 24, because in Matthew 24, Jesus is talking to Jewish believers. There was no church then. It cannot be addressing the church. Now, Matthew 24, verse 15. Matthew 24, verse 15. Therefore, when you see 
the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet, Jesus telling the disciple, telling the way you know that I'm coming back. You, I'm going to give you some event. See, the Bible tells that the rapture is, can happen any time. But people who live during the tribulation period, they, be, they will be able to say the day, the month, and the year when Jesus is going to come again. Because Jesus said, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, whoever read it, let him understand. Jesus said, when you see the abomination, when you see the Antichrist standing on the mercy seat, and declare himself to be God and demand the worship of the whole world, you have 1,260 days before Jesus is going to come again. So you can count the month, you can count the day, you can count the exact time when Jesus is going to come again. Where the Bible makes very clear that the rapture, no one knows the day, no one knows the hour when the rapture is going to take place. Now, verse 16. Now, look at this. Then, when you see the abomination of desolate, when you see the Antichrist standing in the most holy place, now look at this. Let those who are in Judea flee to the mountain. Who lives in Judea? Jewish, Jewish people. You, look, Jesus is talking to Jewish people. People. And he said, when you see the abomination of desolation, let those who are in Judea, if, you, if this would apply to the church, how, you, how we who live in the United States of America, or how believers who live in China, or, or Africa, or South America, how are we going to flee to Judea? We can't. And the reason is because Jesus is not talking to the church. The church was, will not be here, but Jesus is talking to the Jewish nation because the great tribulation is God's way to bring the Jewish nation back to him. In the scripture, it's known as Jacob trouble. Not the trouble of the church. Jacob trouble. Let those who are in Judea flee to the mount. See, you read this verse. And you avoid it. You skip over. Because in your mind, you want to prove that the church is on the earth during the tribulation, but the church is not here. Now look at verse 17. Let him who is on the house top not go down to take anything out of his house. Verse 18. But woe to those. Verse 17. Too fast for me. Let him who is on the housetop not go down to take anything out of his house. Next. And let him who is in the field not go back to get his clothes. 19. Now look at this. But woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing baby in those days. So Jesus, he said, woe. To anyone who is expecting a child. To anyone who feed, you know, breastfeeding a baby. Verse 20. And pray that your flight might not be in winter or not on the Sabbath. Again, this verse tells us that Jesus is talking to Jewish people. We are not under the law. We are not commanded to observe the Sabbath. Jewish people, they still observe the Sabbath. If you, if you, if you know them, they shut down everything else on, on Friday. And they don't work on Saturday. Why? Because the law, they are still under the bondage of the law, and they observe the Sabbath. But we are not under the bondage of the law. We don't observe the Sabbath. So as you can see, Jesus is not talking to the church. It's talking to Jewish people people who are going to be on this earth during the tribulation period they are going to be they are going to face the antichrist they are going to face the wrath of the antichrist against them and ye were trying to exterminate the nation of Israel and Jesus warned them 
Whoa! Pray that when this event will take place, it will not be in the winter time because it's hard to run and to flee during the winter time or in the Sabbath. Because in the Sabbath, they're not allowed to do anything. So as you can see, is it clearly? Or am I wrong? Or it's two different events. It, 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 it describes two different group of people. It's not the same event. It's not the rapture taking place after the tribulation. No. Different. 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 Listen to me. Like I said, the scripture sp speak by itself, if you're allowed to. Listen, we could argue. I mean, uh, let me say this. Are people who believe in the post-trip rapture of the church, are they, going, are they going to be left behind when the rapture is going to take place before the beginning of the tribulation? No. Because you're... you're Inclusion in the body of Christ does not believe if you believe in a pre mid pre rot the post tribulation. The danger is this that when you preach and when you teach that the, tri that the rapture is going to take place at the end of the tribulation and there are sign event that must take in place, you program in people's mind to, to look for something. When we are commanded to watch and pray always, to be ready always. See, they're going to be they're going to be looking for the for the sun to be darkened. They're going to be looking for the for the moon not to give their light. They're going to be looking for the star to fall from heaven. They're going to be looking for the power of the heaven to be shaken. But those things are going to be going to happen during the tribulation period, not before. So some of them, they can come to, the, oh, Jesus is not coming back because all this event is not happening. So I can continue living the way I want to live. I can continue having fun. I can continue running my whole life and now looking. See the danger? When you, when you know that Jesus could come anytime, like he could come right now, you make sure that you're going to be ready. But if people tell you there's something that got to happen before, and then a lot of time you might disregard being ready. But let me tell you something. The important thing is Jesus is coming. It's coming. It's coming. And he, remember, Revelation, I wouldn't have to turn to, but Revelation chapter 3, verse 10, because you persevere, Jesus told the church and fell there, for because you persevere, I will keep you. Remember, he did not say, uh, from the hour of trial. He did not say, I will keep you through the hour of trial. I will keep you from the hour of trial. They will come upon all the face of the earth to test the inhabitants of the earth. Jesus is going to remove as a reward. Remember, he's a, he's a, he's a husband. He's a bridegroom. Ooh. Whose husband will leave his wife on the earth to be abused by evil and wicked men? No, that's not. That's not the way love is manifest. It's coming. And we don't know the day. We don't know the hour. So we must be Father, thank you for your word. Thank you once again for enlightening us. I'm not better than other Bible scholar. I'm not better than a Bible teacher, whatever they are, Lord. I just allow the scripture and allow the Holy Spirit to speak and to tell what the truth is all about. And Lord, help us to take this word. And help us to understand there's nothing that must happen for 
you to come back. And for us to meet in the air. It could happen right now, right at this moment. That's why it's very important for everyone to be ready. Lord, as we worship you right now, speak to our heart, com comfort us, strengthen us, those who are watching the live stream, do the, do the same to them, Lord. In your precious name we pray. Amen. And let's worship the Lord.
one in our family.